Hello, everyone. It is great to have you for our online worship service this morning. One of the advantages of an online service is your ability to participate. In your comments, I want you to respond to a question for today, and this is what it is. What do you want your life to be remembered for? Today in our series, Marriage Is, we're talking about leaving a legacy. Our purpose today is to leave a lasting legacy. How do you do that? How do you leave a lasting legacy? A few things to remember as we are in this study. God created your marriage and he defined marriage. And any other type of, mar of a marriage relationship is an imitation and it is fake because it lacks the soul of what God created. Your marriage is a picture of that relationship between Jesus and a Christian. Jesus, as we look into the scriptures, we find that he left us a legacy. And we will leave a legacy as well. The question is, what will your legacy be? Every couple has to make a choice to put a stake in the ground, so to speak, a marker of a new beginning, and start a new legacy with their family. Things can change today. You can change the legacy that you have been leaving to your children and to your grandchildren and possibly to your great-grandchildren. You can make those changes. You could do it right now. One of the greatest gifts that you can give to the next generation is faithfulness and fidelity in your marriage. A legacy of following what God created and designed for you. Not what you have made it to be, but what did God create it to be? How do you leave a lasting godly legacy? It's a question. It's something that we think about. How do we do that? We begin with this. You are an ancestor to someone yet to come. Have you ever thought about that? You are an ancestor to someone who is yet to come. If you live your life knowing that you are an ancestor, that will change the way you make decisions, the way that you live your life, the way that you love your spouse. The way you live and the way that you love your spouse is seen and is duplicated by your children, who in turn will teach that same way of life to their children. And at that point, you now have left a legacy. So what kind of a legacy are you going to leave? There was a man and a woman in the early 1700s. His name was Jonathan, and her name was Sarah. Soon after they were uh, married, they knew that God had called them into the ministry. And they started a brand new church. Today, we would call them church planners. They lived in a small community, and there was a building, but there was no minister. But they felt that call in their life. And so Jonathan accepted that call and became the pastor of that church. Through the years, Jonathan became one of the greatest preachers that the world has ever known. What kind of a legacy did Jonathan and Sarah leave to the world? What did they plan for? What did the world come to know? About oh, 180 years after they had passed away, in the early 1900s, there was a book written about their descendants. And I want to give you a list of the legacy that Jonathan and Sarah left. 100 lawyers one dean of a law school, 80 holders of public offices, 66 doctors, one dean of a medical school, 
65 professors at universities, 30 judges, 13 college presidents, three mayors of large cities, three governors, three senators, one controller of the United States Treasury, and one vice president of the United States of America. And that was in the first 200 years. What a legacy. A legacy that anyone would look at and just go, wow, how did that happen? What made that a possibility? Stephen Lawson wrote, every person leaves a lasting influence that will affect future generations for centuries to come. But not all legacies are the same. What kind of a legacy will you leave behind? A spiritual legacy? That's one that money can't buy and taxes can't take away. A spiritual legacy is passing down to the next generation what matters most. Again, what kind of a legacy will you leave behind? I'm reminded of a story. These two brothers, they were horrible men. They were, they were evil. But they went to this church in their town, and, and everyone thought that they were just great Christian men, except for the one that they interacted with so often, who was the pastor of the church. And he saw through their facade. Well, as happens to each one of us, one of the brothers passed away. And the other brother, the one that's still alive, he came up to the pastor and he gave the pastor a big check for the church. And he said, there's only one catch to it. You have to say at my brother's funeral that he was a saint. Well, the pastor agreed and he immediately had that check deposited right away. A few days later, as the funeral began, the pastor started the, the message and he said, this man was an evil man. He cheated on his wife. He abused his children. He lied to all of you that are here. He stole from his employees. He cheated on his taxes. But compared to his brother, he was a saint. What kind of a legacy will you leave behind? Is there going to be somebody who has to try and bribe the minister to say good things? What will the quotations be at your funeral service? I want to give you today five essentials for leaving a godly legacy that will last for generations. I want you to know how to leave a legacy. And I want you to know what should be the priorities in your legacy. Your marriage is important to God. Your marriage is set in a way that you should leave a legacy to your children's children's children. So let's begin with these five. The first one is, fear the Lord and obey Him. Your legacy begins in your heart, in your relationship with God. That's where the legacy begins. How you live your life, how you treat your wife, how you relate to your children. This all begins in the heart. In the 112th Psalm, beginning in verse 1, the author wrote, Praise the Lord, blessed are those who fear the Lord, and who find great delight in His commands. And their children will be mighty in the land, the generation of the upright will be blessed." Leave a legacy that comes from the heart. That's number one. Here's number two. Recognize the world's need and respond with compassion and action. Did you catch that? Recognize the world's need and respond with compassion and action. Leave a legacy by com being committed to doing something about our world. Leave a legacy and recognize it. Don't just leave it hanging there and just sitting there with, with no one knowing what in the world was going on or who you were and that it has no effect on anyone around you. 
In the book of Matthew and in chapter 9, Matthew's writing and he says this in verses 36 through 38. And when he saw the crowd, speaking of Jesus, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord, the Lord of the harvest, and therefore to send out workers into the harvest field. Show people the love of Jesus, especially in your community, and you will leave a legacy that people will know about for generations. Know it. Be a part of it. Don't just see the need and then do nothing about it. Leave a legacy of action and compassion. Here's number three. Pray as a couple that God will use you to accomplish His purposes. Pray as a couple that God will use you to accomplish His purposes. All the way back in the, in the Old Testament, in a book called the First Chronicles, and in chapter 4, just one verse, it's called the Prayer of Jabez. And Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from the harm from evil, so that I will be free from the pain of evil. And God granted his request. What was it that Jabez was asking for? He was asking that God would bless him that God would give him more wealth and influence, and that God would keep him from the pain of temptation and evil. And what was God's response to this? Yes. Why? Because Jabez was trying to make a change in the legacy that he was going to be leaving. And he was seeking God's help and seeking God's wisdom. So God answered, yes. As a couple, pray this prayer regularly and see what God does in your lives. Ask God to bless your marriage. Ask God to bless you so that you are free from temptation and, and that you, you are not suffering the pain of evil that goes on around you. There's a book written called The Prayer of Jabez. I recommend that you look this up. Find this book. Purchase this book. And as a couple, read it together and see what God does. Here's our next one. Help your spouse be a better steward of their gifts and abilities. Help your spouse be a better steward of their gifts and abilities. In other words, do things like help them get plugged in to your local church. Help them recognize their convictions for, for what they are. They are God calling them in their lives to his service. A gentleman by the name of Thomas Carlyle said this, conviction is worthless until it can convert itself into conduct. Conviction is worthless until it can convert itself into conduct. Help your mate determine what they can live for. What is the purpose that, that they have in their lives? What lights their fire and, and how they can express that into their community, into their families, into their children, and so on. How do they do that? Give them that opportunity, that encouragement. Help them see it and know it. And finally, number five, ask God to give your children a sense of purpose direction, and mission. Now listen, next week we're going to talk about children. And specifically, our purpose for next week is about how to instill into your children purpose for life. Purpose for life. But if we're going to ask God to give your children a sense of purpose and direction and mission, then we should be able to see the evidence of that. The challenge is to leave your children a heritage, not just an inheritance. 
There should be something that they have that they can hold on to. Our children are the living message that we send to a time that we will not see. They're going to carry this on. What type of a person are you is going to be carried on well after you have passed away. So don't leave your children with large amounts of money. It will likely hurt them more than it'll do them good. Leave your children a spiritual heritage. Something that they can fall back on. Something that they can cling to. Something that will point them in the way forward. David Livingston, a very famous missionary to Africa years ago, said, I will go anywhere as long as it is forward. As long as it is forward. You want to know when our children run into problems? When they stagnate. When they have no reason to move forward. They can't see a reason to move forward. There's nothing in their heart. There's nothing in their soul. They don't cling to God. They don't cling to to anything. They they have no reason for uh, uh, compassion. They have no reason in them or purpose within them to reach out to their neighbors, to their loved ones. They're just kind of blah. Blah. What does that do to their souls? What does it do to them? What does that pass on? A real godly legacy can only come from a marriage that has been centered and planned on for obedience to the example that Jesus himself lived out. A real godly legacy. What is your legacy saying today? What do you observe? Sometimes it's difficult to see. Sometimes we don't know which way to look. We're trying to push our children and push our children Sometimes we find ourselves so disappointed in our grandchildren. Where did they get that from? A legacy. Our purpose today, to leave a lasting legacy. If I had time today, I would immediately start next Sunday's message, but I don't have time. Raising kids with a purpose for life. Raising them with a foreknowledge and set and a plan that we would raise our children in such a way that we leave a legacy for them that they will be successful in life. To leave a legacy. What? does your legacy say? Now, some of you here, your your parents did not do a good job. Some of you that are listening today, home life was not good growing up. There were problems. And so you're thinking to yourself, well, then they left the legacy to me and I'm passing on that legacy. And that is true to a certain point. But here's the great thing about Jesus. He's all about new beginnings. I started this message off today telling you that you could do, uh, 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 that you could manage a change and that you could start a new beginning to leave a legacy. And that's the great thing about God. You don't have to wait. You can do it right now. You can start today. You just have to sit down as a couple and begin to pray and to look and to seek God out. Buy that book, The Prayer of Jabez. And begin to study and to look and to see how do we pray together? Make a plan together that our children's children's children may know 
that they inherited from us. God bless you. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at our online worship service today. I'm going to pray for us in just a bit. But if you're ready to take the next step today, if you want to leave a legacy, uh, you can leave a comment. Our staff is standing by to monitor those comments and uh, be able to answer questions you might have. Uh, or if you'd like something a little more personal, if you want to send a text message, if you want to do a phone call, if you want to even do a video chat, we could set that up. Or if you're daring enough, we could even do a face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, but call or text us at this number, 541-316-8991, and we'll have people monitoring that number as well. I want to talk to you about worship through giving. Uh, thank you so much to those of you who have set up online profiles through our website to set up recurring gifts. We really appreciate that. It makes our ministry assistance life way easier. If you want to set that up, message us at the number, or also you can just go to our website, baptistchurchonhomedale.org, and go to the Give tab and set that up. You can also just text us. We'd be able to set you up with directions there as well. Several of you have also just driven by our building to drop off your tithes and offerings, so really appreciate that as well, and you can do that during office hours. You know, we might not be able to meet in person right now, but that does not change our mission of our church, sharing Christ and building believers. And it doesn't change uh, that we want to still be ministering to our community. So your mission uh, or our mission is still being supported through your generous gifts. So thank you so much. You know, there's several families not going out of their houses. I've seen uh, people on our ministerial staff running errands for people, uh, doing firewood and groceries. Uh, so if you have a need or know someone has a need like that, please let us know. Uh, we've, doing, we've been doing crafts still with kids and even delivering some of those crafts. So if you need that, uh, please let us know as well. Our church is also supporting missions still. And so we've got the gospel mission in town. We support them. So if you give to us, part of that definitely goes to the gospel mission, getting people fed as well. Also, we're doing some development with our online content and our virtual small groups. Uh, so thank you so much for those of you who are able to give. You know, Romans tells us that we're one body and we're members of one another. And so we want to be taking care of one another. So if you know someone in need, uh, please contact us at this number and let us know. Let's go ahead and close today's worship in prayer together. God. Thank you so much for everyone who was able to join us online today. And they gave up a part of their time. They could have just been binging TV and other content all day. And instead, they made time and space in their household and their families uh, for you and what you want to do in their lives. So as they've honored you at that time, Lord, we ask that uh, you would also be faithful to them and show up in our lives in a powerful way. God, help us with every decision that we are uh, making a representation of what could be happening in the future to our, uh, our descendants, people who are going to come after us. And we want to live an upright life and set a good example for them. So help us to do that, especially during uh, this difficult time. This is something that maybe even our grandkids will ask us about, uh, that we lived in such a unique time and what was it like. Lord, thank you so much for the tithes and offerings, people who are setting up online accounts and profiles uh, through our website. And uh, we want to be able to effectively use those funds for your mission and needs that you see in our community as well. I ask all this in your name. Amen. Thank you so much again. God bless you.